Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the Hot Rod Workshop. Today, we're gonna to be discussing hammer welding. Now, hammer welding is a bit of a dying art. Um, not a lot of people do it anymore in the world of Bondo and plastic and high filler primer. You know, it's, it's a time consuming process and uh, it's a great skill to have if you're looking to weld two pieces of metal together and your overall goal is to make it look like it never even happened. Let's say you are welding these two pieces together in this line here and you start, let's say you start here and you work your way down. As you start to heat up this section of these two panels and you start forming your puddle and you start adding filler rod, all this heat is going to shrink this area in like so and as you travel as you travel it's going to continue to shrink in shrink in shrink in and the more and more you weld the hotter and hotter it's going to get i mean a shrink is always going to happen with welding um and traditionally in a situation like this is you would come back you would grind it down you know let's, let's say you build up a weld something along the lines of this As you weld this, you're going to create, this section is going to shrink. You're gonna create a bit of a valley on both sides, like so. So when you hit this with a grinder, sure, you're gonna hit this right away, but then before you know it, you're gonna start making marks out here. And this works fine if you're real, real careful and you kind of utilize the tip of your grinder or roll a disc, whatever you're doing, but there's ways to avoid this. And a lot of times there's ways to not even involve a grinder at all. You can just hit it with a, a rasp, a file, a few runs with sandpaper, a DA, and I mean, you're there. And that's with hammer welding. Traditionally, hammer welding is performed with an oxyacetylene torch. Oxyacetylene welding provides a large heat affected zone and also a very malleable weld bead for you to manipulate with the hammer dolly. So hammer welding works great in this technique. But today we're going to do some hammer welding with the TIG torch. Now in comparison to the oxyacetylene torch, the TIG torch's heat affected zone is much, much smaller, which you have to keep in mind when you're performing hammer welding, you're in a bit more of a time crunch for you to manipulate that weld while it's still hot and malleable. Now, our demonstration today is going to take place on this 1941 Chevy Dash that I shortened when I was 24, maybe, 23, and boy did I screw it up. The fitment of the two halves are square, but this center section here, there was a huge radio, huge tube radio right here. And in when I went to cut down the center, these pieces met relatively well. So I welded them with a MIG welder, of course. And it distorted a bit, but I was able to smooth it out. You know, grinder and paint makes me the welder I ain't kind of deal. But in this center section, it still had a bit of a return on the inside, like a flange almost. And not thinking i'm like oh i'll just make a patch and i'll just throw it in there and i'll just weld in here and i mean you can probably look at it at the angle that you're at this is cupped in like severe this radius here is pretty consistent until about here it starts to flatten it gets dead flat here and then it starts to rise back up again so i may use this in the roadster later on i'm not quite sure yet but for now this is a good a good opportunity to provide a demonstration of hammer weld and we're going to cut this center section out make a new patch for it that matches the radius tack it in place and then finish weld it utilizing hammer welding to relieve that shrink that the weld puts in the panel so to find out how much of this we need to cut out i'm going to run a straight edge from this reveal to this reveal here and you can see by the light underneath the straight edge of how much it cups in and then returns again. And we'll make marks to see at least how much we have to cut out 
and then we'll make a nice uniform cut for us to make our patch. Okay, so we removed the center section of the dash and these sides actually, as soon as that piece was removed, these sides actually relaxed to where they wanted to be originally from the factories. I used my radius gauge, which has multiple sized radiuses, and I found that both sides, with this side needing a little bit of persuasion, ended up being a number 12 radius. So that'll help me for when I make my patch panel. I'm gonna use this opportunity to address some low spots from the old weld when I originally cut the center section out of this dash. There is some low spots here, so I just made a quick pass with the flat wheel on uh, the top and I ground down the bottom so it's equally as smooth, top and bottom. And I'm gonna hit this area with the die chem, let it dry, and I'll hit it with a flat file and that'll give me a clear indication as to where my lows are. All right, so now we got a clear indication as to where our low spot is. So we'll hit this with the hammer dolly and run it with the file again and keep going back and forth, hammer dolly, file, hammer dolly, file, until I can get a uniform filing just running this flat file, well, rounded file, onto this surface. All right, so we got our stencil all cut out, ready to go. Got a piece of 20 gauge, it'll work just fine. Now we gotta head over to the slip roll and put this number 12 radius in our patch panel first before we cut it out. Okay, the panel's all cut out and trimmed and filed down and fitting nicely. Next step is to tack and replace. I like to throw a sandbag on one side just so I have some downward pressure on the panel so I can hold my dolly up from underneath and hammer down and have enough force.
Now, this weld in particular right here, besides the little hole we have, this ended up being having too much filler rod. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the, another pass on this with just the TIG torch to heat it back up and see if I can squish that down a little bit more. All right, so we're all finished welded. From here, we'll hit this with a rasp, a file, and if we have to, a die grinder or flat wheel, something along those lines, and smooth it all out and make it look like this weld never even took place. All right, there we go. Got our new panel in there, ground down, smoothed out with a file and some sandpaper. Still requires a little bit of work with the hammer dolly to get it just right, but we're well on our way, it's a lot better than it was, and it'll fit well in the Roadster. Well, we'll see. I mean, who knows, I could always change my mind last minute, but. Now it is possible to do the hammer welding with the TIG torch. It is a little bit easier, maybe even more forgiving to do it with the oxyacetylene torch because you have more time to manipulate the steel with the heat. But it is possible to do it with the TIG torch. Just need a little bit of patience and your fit of your replacement panel has to be really, really spot on. But it is possible. Thanks for watching. <sighs>